President Kufuado signed into law the Right to Information Bill guaranteeing the right to information after nearly two decades of relentless campaigns by local rights groups. According to a research by Parliament, the cost of the implementation of the bill is pegged at 200 uh, 750 million CDs over the next five years. This cost is in reference to the likely cost associated with the policy of establishing and operating an office for the right to information commission in the next five years, even though the law is expected to take effect from January 2020 after the president's assent, there are still unresolved issues that are supposed to help with the effective implementation of the bill. But how will the bill be implemented if these measures are yet to be put in place? Uh, let's quickly get to on to the telephone lines and speak with the spokesperson for the RTI Implementation Committee and the Executive Director of the Parliamentary Network Africa, Sami Abing. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, so I am curious, uh, like many of our listeners and viewers, whether you have had any engagement with the government on the implementation of the RTI this year. Good afternoon to mm. you, Stephen, um, and good afternoon to your viewers and listeners. Now, the Ministry of Information, which is the um, coordinating ministry to ensure the full implementation of the RTI law, sometime in the middle of last year, engaged with all stakeholders, civil society included, um, to have a roadmap on how they were going to see to its implementation. The roadmap spelled out timelines within which they wanted to have specific things done, including appointing an RTI commissioner, setting up the RTI commission, appointing RTI officers at the various MMBAs, and what have you. Now, uh, it was our expectation that during the course of the year, we would have very regular conversations with the ministry so that they will be updating us um, on how far with the work, the, the, the scheme of work. Uh, we had some level of engagement with them. It wasn't as regular as we we had envisaged. And uh, because of that, even now, today being the 5th of January 2020, four days or five days after the full rollout of the law, uh, we are, as an implementation committee, not fully aware of which aspects of the roadmap government or the Ministry mm. of Information mm. have been able to uh, uh, check, which of the boxes they've been able to fully check and which ones they're actually struggling with because we don't have official information uh, uh, from them. Although we know from publications that they have put out, including uh, infographics on their website and, and on social media, including um, audiovisual materials that they have put up, uh, it shows that they are ready. They indicate in those materials that there are information officers at the various MBAs who are willing and able to take up our information if our information request mm. that if we go to these places, there are pre-designed forms that can assist people to do the application. And so, uh, so far as we are concerned, the very first steps that need to uh, be put in place from their indications we get are in place, and citizens are encouraged very much right. that instead of us you know, uh, throwing our hands in despair, we need to test the system. Mm. and to be able to figure out you know, whether these systems have been put out by the information ministry. I, I, I like the optimism, but I like the optimism. But I must say that we were aware of press, uh, Parliament's research that pegged the cost of implementation to 750 million Ghana cities. But uh, we also understand that there were certain measures uh, like funding that are expected to be put in place before uh, it's the implementation of the RTI. Do you have any uh, knowledge or idea of how far these, uh, you know, funding mechanisms, etc. how far they've gone? Right. Um, so you'll recall that during the period that Parliament Research Department put out the figures of 715 million Ghana cities as implementation cost for five years, uh, some of us actually disputed that heavily. Even some members of Parliament disputed that heavily. And so that particular document really is not one that we want to make consistent reference to because uh, it didn't really show... Uh, 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 that it had much weight. But be that as it may, we were expecting that government was going to make allocation within the 2020 budget for RTI implementation because that was the reason why full implementation was pushed to 2020. If you check government budget for 2020, 20 million Ghana cities, at least from my last check, 
had been allocated for RTI implementation under the Ministry of Information, 20 million Ghana cities. Uh, now, we know that this may not be very adequate. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a fair step, yes, but it may not be very adequate in the, in the full implementation. The Minister for Information, in some media interviews that I followed over the holiday period, indicated that funding has been their major challenge with uh, rolling out their roadmap. We know that they were expecting some money at the, during the second half of last year as part of the mid-year reviewed budget that came up. Much of that resource right. did not come, and so it actually stifled a lot of their efforts. But we maintain as a coalition and as the Civil Society Implementation Committee that government must provide the needed resources to the various MBAs to be able to do their work. The ministry assured us in media interviews again that they are ready, and so we are holding them uh, to that task. Right. And we are saying that for media people, researchers, civil society organizations, and what have you, as the working week has actually begun, we should, if we have information requests, test the system, and then based on the feedback we get from testing the system, we can know whether it's robust or there are still gaps. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Samuel Obey. Let's quickly get onto the other telephone lines and speak with Ben Abdallah of Inso, uh, North MP. Good afternoon and thank you. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us. I, I, I want to ask you, as ranking member of the, the committee, uh, Communications Committee of Parliament, what your thoughts are on the implementation of the, of the, of the Right to Information Act four days into five days into the the implementation. Okay, let, let me uh, first of all say good afternoon to all of you. But I'm the MP for Fenso South. Mm. I'm also the chairman of the Committee on Constitutional and Legal. Right. Um, the application process is simple. Once the implementation process is being ruled out, uh, what it means is that people uh, can begin to apply for information. If I say people, um, citizens and non-citizens uh, all entitled to apply for information. And applying for information, you have to write to a specific public institution. Mm. Uh, every public institution in Ghana is supposed to roll out a manual um, publicize the manual, and in the manual, the public institution will have to state which categories of information are available um, with that public institution, which people can apply for or can seek. So the application will have to be in a in a in a in a written form, right? In the English language, where the applicant can write. I can read. It is the responsibility of the information officer to reduce whatever the applicant is sending to writing and read the content of the application to the understanding of the applicant before the applicant would then append his or her signature. Mm, right. So, I mean, you're, you're giving us the uh, processes that need to be followed if you are to access information. But I, I wanted to know what your assessment of the implementation so far has been. For example, how many uh, people have taken advantage of this new law and are putting applications? Uh, what are the funding challenges uh, that have been put in, uh, that have been put in place, etc. Things like that. Uh, for for me, uh, I. Cannot provide that information. Right. Um, the um, particular ministry is the, or the specific ministry is the Ministry of Information. Yeah. So they are in charge with the implementation process. Right, that's fair. So uh, moving moving ahead, I mean, you've outlined exactly uh, the steps that need to be followed in order for anyone to access information. So moving ahead, what are your expectations in terms of how this whole implementation could be improved over, for example, the next five-year period? Now, I, I believe that so far, I have followed the ministry with respect to the information for some time now. Um, and so far, I think that everything has been good. They are trying to put things in place. And they have advertised uh, to recruit information officers. 
And I think that the yeah. advertisement is still ongoing. The process is still ongoing. Uh, yesterday, I spoke to one of the officials, and he told me that they will soon begin to recruit. Uh, but in the meantime, right. they will use um, some personnel in the various public institutions to uh, cater for or take care of applications that will, in the meantime, uh, be brought to those public institutions. So I think that so far it's been good. So So I expect um, the publication to go out that the implementation process is ongoing. People, uh, when the time is due, can apply for information. So I expect a lot of people, a lot of Ghanaians, and non Ghanaians to apply for right. information because uh, Rights Information Act was something that all of us were yearning for. So once right. it's coming to being, the implementation is ongoing, it is expected that a lot more information or a lot of information will be sought for by a lot of people. Right, Honorable, we're grateful for your time. Thank you.